Gibraltar, a small but strategically important rock at the entrance to the Mediterranean. Although disputed by Spain, the rock remains a British overseas territory. In Greek and Roman mythology, it is known as one of the Pillars of Hercules, placed by Hercules himself at the gateway to the Med. The other is a mountain in Africa. This small rock bristling with military history is currently outside of the Schengen area, so offers British sailors an escape from the zone as well as some reminders of home. This is Intrepid Bear, a 40-foot sailboat off to explore the world with her crew Ian and Kate. Come aboard and let's see what's out there. So behind me is Gibraltar Airport and the runway runs literally right across the road here and uh, when a plane comes in the uh, barriers will come down and um, they'll stop the traffic uh, because there is a plane due in about 10-15 minutes so um, we could see that coming in so yeah there's the plane down and now everybody just walks off across the runway all the cars so we're just coming on to the runway now, look. There's the runway down there. Plane just over there. Quite incredible, like a minute ago, a plane just came past here. You'd never normally get to walk on something like this, like on a runway. But there it is, and there's the runway down towards the water. Spain down there, Trevor Bear just behind. Over there. Much of the history and points of interest are up the rock in an area known as the Upper Rock Nature Reserve. One way up with panoramic views is the cable car. Once at the top, the first thing to be wary of are the Barbary macaques, who are skilled in the art of removing food and valuables from tourists. These monkeys are originally from the Atlas and Rift Mountains of Morocco. It is believed, but it's not certain, that they were introduced by the Moorish people who lived on Gibraltar between the years 700 and 1492. They are the only wild monkey population on the European continent. At times they exhibited incredibly human-like behaviours. The GoPro audio had failed here, but what I was saying is how fed up this poor little fellow looks. He wasn't having a good day at all. Once at the top on a clear day, the views were just breathtaking. That is the med, yeah. There's a plane coming in. Yeah. So we've come up the rock on the cable car and this is the other side of the rock and that is the Mediterranean. On our first trip up the rock, the weather was calm and clear, but quite often Gibraltar forms its own cloud and weather system, as moist air from the Mediterranean hits the rock and is forced upwards to condense into a cloud, which then swirls above. Unfortunately, still blighted by a GoPro that decided not to record audio, this was the other way up the rock. Walking. It's probably just as well you can't hear us as we're huffing and puffing. 
as we make our way up to O'Hara's battery. Two large guns high on the southern end of the rock, capable of firing across to Africa and thus covering the whole entrance to the Med, showing why Gibraltar was and still is so strategically important. At the northern end of the rock and a bit lower down are the Great Siege Tunnels. The Great Siege of Gibraltar was an attempt by France and Spain to capture Gibraltar from Great Britain during the American Revolutionary War, lasting from July 1779 to February 1783. During the siege, British and Spanish forces faced each other across approximately one kilometre wide stretch of the marshy open ground that forms the isthmus immediately to the north of the Rock of Gibraltar currently where the airport is situated. Gun batteries were placed in a series of galleries on the north face of the rock, providing overlapping fields of fire. The impetus for the construction of the tunnel came from the garrison's need to cover a blind angle on the northeast side of the rock. The only solution found to cover that angle was via a gun mounted on a spur of rock known as the notch. There was no possibility of building a path there due to the vertical cliff face, so Sergeant Major Henry Ince of the military artificers suggested digging a tunnel to reach it. And construction work began on the 25th of May 1782. Incredible. So that hole where we were just now, that is in this bit of rock. This is just a picture stuck out on the edge. So that hollowed out bit over there is inside there. Wow. Quite incredible to think this is all dug out in the 1780s. But it's seriously manual labor. The use of tunnels continued in later wars, including World War II. So in the World War II tunnels, we have to wear hard hats. We didn't have to do that in the uh, siege tunnels. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the height or the risk of things falling. World War II was the most intensive phase of tunnelling in Gibraltar, but the total length of tunnels increased from 7 miles to 25 miles. The World War II tunnels contained everything required to house a garrison of 16,000 men with enough food for 16 months. And down here they've got everything, um, living accommodation, hospital, offices, the whole lot buried under the rock here. Just, in, uh, just as a defensive position for the rock, and it was never taken in World War II. I find things like this bring up all sorts of emotions in me, just seeing the little scenario there set up with the tables and bottles, and then suddenly you realise that this isn't just a museum, this is where people lived and for years, and they yeah, had fun and died, and, and my just, mind just starts to think about all the lives and what it would be like to live here, and I find it really eerie because it's not happening, it's just a ster not even sterile, it's a dead place. It was once alive, so it's creepy. Traces of people's lives. Also on the upper rock was the knee-trembling glass walkway called Skywalk, which afforded awesome views out over the eastern side of the island. And back underground, but in a natural cavern this time, St Michael's Cave, with its incredible stalagmites and stalactites illuminated by a light show. And then back down to ground level. Where are we going today? To Europa Point. Yeah. And what's Europa Point? It's the other end of Gibraltar, I don't know, <laughs> you tell me. It's the southern tip of Gibraltar and there's a lighthouse there, but 
hopefully if we're on the southern tip we can look out both sides down the strait and out into the med so all the way around like the inner part of the city shall we say is this massive wall um, the place is just full of history it's a really thick wall if you come through the wall and see how thick it is as we go through So this is the 100 ton gun, they call it a Victorian super gun, but the um, position here covered well out into the bay so as we come up here you can see how it covered the whole of the bay. One of the things we learned downstairs as well is that um, after Battle of Trafalgar this is where HMS Victory came afterwards um, for repairs with Nelson's body on board before it then left here to go back to Great Britain with his body. Yeah. Quite an eerie. Eerie tunnel. tunnel. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of. It. Kind of desolate, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it really feels like doing something wrong to be walking through a tunnel this long. It's not. Yes, we said no, we do tunnels. It's just a little van, but it sounds like an airliner coming up behind you in here. The echo, wow. Light at the end of the tunnel. It's got a good half a K. That's good. I reckon. I know. Yeah, I reckon it's a view. Now this is Europa Point, this is the southern tip of Gibraltar. So out in front of us is Africa. To the left or to the east is the Med and to the west is the Gibraltar Straits and Spain over there. Um, yeah, southern tip. Gibraltar baby. Gibraltar baby. <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh yeah, it's my birthday. It's your birthday. You bring me to all the best places. I do, Gibraltar, the Med. Day to you. We were both really touched by our friends who laid on a birthday party for Kate. It really made the evening special. After a day or two recovering from the party, there was just one more thing we wanted to explore before preparing for sea. Not whilst walking. Not whilst walking there. So today we're going to tackle what the Mediterranean steps. Apparently some really steep steps up the side of the island right on the uh, southern tip. Really good views apparently. Yeah, no warm-up. Yeah. No warm-up. So we'll see what these steps are like. <laughs> so down there, down there is um, Europa Point where we were the other day. That's where the lighthouse is. right on the side of the cliffs. This is going to show up, but we're here. And we can see the steps down there. So that must mean around that corner is one hell of a steep little drop. I'm going to say ziggy zaggy down there. That's how it gets down the side of there. But as Kate says, we're going down when we should be going up. So there's going to be a lot of up when we get around the corner in a minute, I reckon. You're like a mountain goat.
So I have questions. How the hell do they build a building up here? There's no road, there's just these steps. And then the next, next question is, where do the steps go? I can't see, all I can see is vertical cliffs. No, it is, it is, there's a tunnel, you're right. Oh, wow. Are you filming? Yeah. Quite a steep bit here. <laughs> That's nearly the top, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I said. That thing up there. Ooh. Strain. Is what? Strain. Oh, yes. There's O'Hara. We're there. Uh -huh. Oh, we've done it. Nearly. Last <laughs> bit. <laughs> well, you were down there. It was only part of the way. It's that one. We did it! Uh, holy shrewly! Guacamole! We made it! We did it! Now we're going down! Going heading on down! We Tried to stop for our lunch, just unpacked the sandwich and suddenly we got monkey mobbed! Didn't film it because the camera had been put away just in case there were any monkeys! But yeah, we... Uh, Luckily, seen Kate. Any, have we? No, we, we didn't think there was any up there. Not seen any up by the guns. Heard the rustle. Kate heard them, <laughs> and uh, looked round. Two monkeys there trying to move in on our lunch. So uh, we packed lunch away again, and now we're heading down the rock. I think the only thing left really to see up this rock is a suspension bridge. Yeah. And we'll have a quick stroll across that on the way back down, and then as a reward, fish and chips this evening. <laughs> Okay, so that was our touristy bit for Gibraltar. I know you haven't even seen Intrepid Bear in this episode, but look, here she is behind it. Um, but occasionally we are gonna explore and uh, make no apologies for that. So come back next week when we really do start sailing. Uh, we got to deal with some incessant weather and an, and an extreme weather event in Gibraltar before we prep the boat and head off on our epic voyage across the Mediterranean where we don't even go ashore for 28 days, isn't it? Yeah, 1460 or two miles, I think. So thank you for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to what? Subscribe, click the notification bell, and then we notify when we release a new main episode or even a new Bear Essential. Share, comment, because all these things really help us replace baby drone who fell in the water not very long ago. And really appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs>